the final word from Slovakia nil, Republic of Ireland nil, but a 4-2 loss on penalties after extra time. Gary is just back from Bratislava. Um, firstly, how was the flight over back? What was what was it like over in Bratislava? Well, it's very quiet, I suppose. Um, the the pretty much the the same is also even a bit more shut down than us with regards COVID. Um, the game was very low key. The attendance was was tiny. I mean, you actually needed a printed uh, COVID test, negative COVID test, within seventy two hours, and I imagine that even put off a lot of local journalists or anything from going and. There were there were very very few people in the stadium. Um, outside, you wouldn't even know the game was going on. I mean, my hotel was actually just around the corner from the stadium, so I actually stayed out there. I I went for something to eat in a restaurant with, that had an outdoors before the game, and I was there on my own. There was not much. I didn't see any evidence of Slovak fans, except at the start of the game, you could actually hear them for about thirty seconds. And I don't know then if they packed up and left or if they were actually moved on because I didn't hear them after that. But they were very noisy at the start of the game. But otherwise, you wouldn't really know the game was on. There wasn't um, any real atmosphere, excitement around the place. All the pubs there shut at 10 o'clock as well. So that's probably a bit of a dampener as well. So... um, yeah, it's it's really strange. Uh, it's really strange times and uh, totally different from your typical Irish away game when you have thousands of fans, uh, every seat and every pub is gone and uh, just brilliant atmosphere, which unfortunately isn't around anymore. Yeah, we would we hope it would be back soon anyway. But uh, we get in with the lineup because there was obviously... Uh, a bit of confusion um, with Aaron Connolly and, and Adam Ida because we were all expecting Aaron Connolly to start. It was basically the team I'd picked on the starting level show, except McLean was in for Aaron Connolly. Everything else was correct. I would say, had it not been the case that basically Aaron Connolly and Adam Ida were sitting in front of a, a backroom member of the FAI staff on the plane. Um, was it no, you know, wasn't wasn't even dealing with the person or wasn't didn't have anything to do with just sitting directly in front of them, and because of that, apparently they uh, they missed it. There was a lot of nonsense going around on WhatsApp, say some Egypt putting around some fake news. I, I don't know why this is always going around. It's like that. Oh, my aunt, my uncle's cousin's brother is in the army, and the whole country's going to be locked down tomorrow. All this bullshit. Um, yeah. I had people text me go, oh, look at this, look at this. It's, just, it's always a, a new way to shit on the FAI, even when they haven't done anything wrong. Uh, Dan McDonald came out and cleared it up anyway. Um, very respected journalist. Uh, he, he said that it goes, they were trying to say that basically it was, it was done alphabetically to Adam and Aaron. It wasn't done correctly or some nonsense. It's put in by their surnames anyway. So that's, that's, so that's wrong anyway. But Conley missed out. Apparently, as well, as Stephen Kenny said after the game as well, they, they, they did try to appeal it. It was like 0.3 of a metre or a centimetre or something like that. Um, so pretty much it was a bit of a silly decision. Yeah, yeah it's an interesting one uh, because I'm not... When he actually said he tried to appeal it, I'm actually wondering on, on how were they actually ruled out of the game and, and who's say so. I mean... Hey, they were Jesse. on a flight. So, but do they have jurisdiction? I mean, and how did the HSE even um, get involved in such a situation? Uh, I'm not sure because he, he came out, asked the game to speak to the guy, Havard, and, and that's basically what he, he was saying on, on the interview. He was just like, we tried to appeal it, but the, the measures in Ireland are, are, are much more than they are in, say, the UK, because Guy Havard is obviously English at Sky Sports. Yeah, so I, I, maybe it's the, the I, I don't know, maybe the team doctor made the call. I, I presume for medical matters, maybe that's the way it is. But, um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that I think Aaron Connolly certainly would have 
and possibly Adam Eda as well. He started the first two games under Stephen. Uh, but Aaron Connolly, I think, certainly would have started. I, I think you um, you definitely would have got that right in the starting 11 show. Um, so, yeah, it does it does seem pretty severe. And, uh, and I, I wonder what happens to the guys now. I mean, do they have to stay in Slovakia? And uh, what well, apparently they're the the fine. Stuff? Apparently, you know, uh, Stephen said the two of them are fine, they're healthy, and everything like that. But they just weren't allowed to play. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you also well, been... it's a big loss because I think Aaron Connolly could have been the difference last night. I think he is that person who's that killer edge, has that pace to get in behind, and I feel as though he's one of those players that can turn a half chance into a, a goal. And I felt as though last night would have been the night for him. To, to get that goal that he's probably deserved so far in his international career. Every appearance he's made, he's looked lively, you know? He has. And uh, I remember you actually predicted a 1-0 win for us with Aaron Connolly to score. And who knows? Who knows? You could have been right. Oh, geez, I wish you were. Um, yeah, and they weren't actually in the stadium at all, at all, obviously, as well, because of whatever that ruling was. So that just further rubbishes the the ridiculous WhatsApp claim that was doing the rounds. I'd actually love to know who starts these kind of things because it. Uh, I, I I thought it was a bit sinister. I think someone to to make up something like that always just to have a dig at the FAI because. Um, well, I, I I'd love them to get called out on it, and you can't just be spreading these malicious and nasty rumors, you know. Yeah, well, the best thing to do is probably just take no notice of these people. I was glad that um, Dan McDonald and a few other journalists just kind of put it to bed fairly early, and that was the end of it, because I was still getting sent to past midnight and stuff like that. But uh, McLean coming in for Connolly, you could see the logic there. Uh, it made sense. McLean's produced on big away days in the past. Um, so you could see why he was he was put in there. You know what you're going to kind of get. Um, their fullback as well, their number two was um, pressing quite high, so it, it actually made sense to have McLean in there defensively. He gives us a lot defensively, I feel. Um, but let, let's just kind of talk about how we start, because obviously people were nervous about how the defending was going to be and was there going to be large gaps and stuff like that. I felt as though the defending was brilliant. It was back to back to normal, um, looking solid, slightly shaky at times, but very, very, very uh, few times. Well, I was walking around, we were pressing from the front. We had McGoldrick, we had Hendrick, we had McLean, and we had Robinson all pressing. And I have to say, there was some nice link up play between Matt Doherty um, and Callum Robinson. And then you had McLean and Stevens. And I even felt as though in the first half, Jeff Hendrick was having a very good game. First game I've seen him play very well in a while. Um, in midfield and I thought James McCarthy was doing a number on Hamshick and just keeping him quiet he wasn't letting him dictate play probably as much as he did in the second half but I felt that McCarthy was just kind of staying in and around him he's probably man marking him for the game and was keeping him quiet I felt what were your kind of thoughts kind of looking around the team in the first half yeah I thought we played well I think we didn't have the I suppose in the first two Nations League games we had a very high line um, at the back, and I suppose it's a bit risky. We could have been caught uh, caught out a bit. So I thought we we, as you said, we looked a bit more solid. Um, we did defend very well. Yeah, I I mean the, the people you mentioned, I I was very impressed with with Jeff Hendrick, particularly in the first half. I thought he uh, he had a very good game. Uh, Callum Robinson was very lively. Uh, he certainly he caused them problems. Uh, I thought James McCarthy did well. I mean, he was a loss when he went off. Not too sure about Hamsik. I I thought he he I I thought he really looked really good for the whole game. He 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 is a class player. He he is so good on the ball. He has so much time on the ball, and I thought an awful lot of the Slovakian play did go through him. And uh, so I, I actually did. I was impressed with him, but from uh, James McCarthy's perspective I think he's the best holding midfield player we have now and I I just hope he's um well he's fit long term to be to to perform that role uh I, I thought James McLean did okay he he works really really hard and as you say he's he helps the defensive side as well he tracks back a lot 
and Ender Stevens had his best game for for quite a while as well, and maybe having James in front of him helped that as well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I was happy with the the performance, and in general, it, it's the, the the way that the players played. I mean, there is nobody I would actually have picked out and said they they had a bad game. I put it that way. Yeah. That, yeah, I thought what you said there was interesting because I had said it previously. Um, when I looked at Connolly and Stevens, they never really seemed to be on the same wavelength on that wing. Sometimes when Ender was looking to go forward, he was telling Connolly to drop in and they just seemed to be arguing a little bit, um, obviously because they just wanted to get the result. It wasn't, I'm sure it was nothing personal. Um, but I'd say with another few games of that fitness, maybe that could have you know, helped because I did think Ender, as you mentioned, had his best game for Ireland in a long time. McLean, for me, yeah, he done he done all right, but he needs to do more. A lot of those crosses are never beating the first man, and it's very frustrating because we get in good positions. I remember Jeff Hendrick had opened up a few chances, and well, I thought he, you know actually I thought he did well once he actually closed down the fullback, won a ball, I clipped it over to Didzy then. I think I went there for a corner. Then we had a corner from that from that point. But uh, I think maybe a Connolly in that position up top probably gets in behind and, and maybe is in one on one quicker than maybe Dizzy. But yeah, I think McLean he did the basics right. But we kind of need more for like that's look we're crying out for someone who's going to score goals. But we also need to have players giving good service. Callum Robinson was was kind of similar. He was getting into good positions. He was doing good little things, but not doing a whole lot more. What I was saying about Hamsik is I just felt as though when McCarthy went off the second half and we were come to that, I just felt as though he ran the game a lot more when McCarthy went off. And I felt like when McCarthy was on, they weren't getting a whole lot of chances. I really didn't feel like they were they were creating a whole lot because of what he was doing there. And I just felt as though, as you mentioned, when he went off, he was a big loss. But just, kind of just to, to finish up in the first half, they obviously finished the first half quite strongly. They had the two chances with Duda, uh, he's a former Norwich player, which Jerry was saying on the on the watch along. But he has the the chance then that Dan Randolph tips around the post. Great save because he had nothing really to do before that. So great save by him, great concentration by him. Then the ball comes in and it's a bicycle kick and it just goes wide. And at that point, the, the warning signs were there for the second half. Um, so I, I was, I was quite happy with the way we played and I felt as though the pass and the interplay was really, really good. I didn't think, you mentioned there, you didn't think anyone had a bad game. I thought Conor Heron didn't play well. I thought he just, for whatever reason, just couldn't get into the game. Um, so other people were saying that, that they thought he did. But for me, personally, I just didn't think he got in. Now, I, I wouldn't say he was horrific, but I just didn't think he had a good game. He, you know, a lot of the balls he was giving, he was giving the ball away. He was giving the ball away casually from our box given to their players and stuff like that, which I just feel like if he had been a bit more careful, maybe we would have got up the pitch a bit uh, quicker and further and maybe caused more harm, uh, more penetrating passes, I feel, and we could have got up the pitch quicker. I I didn't think he had a great game. I, I didn't think he was he was bad. I mean, he was involved in quite a bit. He he was on uh, set pieces. Or his delivery was pretty good. He... He did. We can want to talk about his great chance in the in the second half. Bit frustrating. Uh, one thing I would mention is uh, well, Conor Horan's booking, and uh, I could really. See, I was actually sitting just behind the Irish bench, bench, and there was a lot of frustration with the referee, Mister Torpin. Now, I'm not going to go on and moan about referees. I, I don't think he he changed the course of the game or anything like that, but he seemed to be. Very fussy about some of our challenges and let some of theirs go. And Connor's looking for dissent was, uh, uh, I think, a culmination of frustration. Stephen had, I think, in about three occasions in about the five or ten minutes before that, shown his exasperation with the referee. And, and there were there were mistakes. I mean, I think there, there were clearly a couple of free kicks to us that he he should have given. Then he gives a very very soft free kick. To Slovakia, and I mean, it's the inconsistency of referees that can really um, get at people like that. And Connor's frustration boiled over, and he got a yellow card for it. Thankfully, it wasn't uh, it wasn't costly. 
Um, yeah, I, I I can see what you're saying, but I I thought he did okay, and uh, I think we actually need we actually need either Connor or Robbie Brady on the pitch for set pieces. And now, obviously, nothing came out of the set pieces last night, but I, I think they're still an absolutely crucial part of our game. Yeah, we're kind of getting into the second half then, because you know, in the second half, it was then when you know we were thinking, okay, we go, we're doing well. It's nil nil here, and we felt I felt at that point watching it with Jer, I was saying it on the watch log. I think if we get a goal now, you know, I think we'll win it. I think we need to get a goal. And make sure we score first. And he was like, no, 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 I think we'll be okay. I was like, Jer, we need to get a goal here. Or it's going to go to extra time or they're going to score. And, yeah, so, well, there was a devastating blow, obviously, James McCarthy going off. He looked like he pulled up with a hamstring injury. So he went off. Alan Brown came on for him. And then Robbie Brady came on for James McLean, which at that point, I just didn't feel like McLean had been doing a whole lot. Um. If I'm looking at the second half as a, as a whole, I think overall it was a fairly even game. The full 90 minutes, I think they had probably as much chances as us. I know you stats there if you want to go through them. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at the stats, I, I think I, I think a draw over 90 and 120 minutes was a fair result, first of all. I think possibly argue if anyone deserved to win it, we did, but... Look, if you look at the stats, I mean, obviously the goals went in a little. We had 12 total attempts each, two attempts each on target of the 12. Six attempts each uh, were off target and four attempts each were blocked. We had six corners to their five. Um, they they shaded possession 52-48. I mean, uh, there was, their passing accuracy was slightly better. But it was an even game. It was a close game. The stats bear that out. I think you're definitely right. I mean, had we scored, or, but had they scored as well, I mean, we both had kind of half chances. One goal would definitely, I think, have won it. I don't, I don't think there would have been any way back had either of us scored. Um, look, it, it, I think we both said, I think no, not just us, everyone was saying it was going to be very tight. It was very tight. The other playoffs, the, the, the other one in our section, Bosnia and Northern Ireland, went the whole way to penalties as well. The two League C, C playoffs went to extra time. <sighs> there were evenly matched teams, and it was very close, and the stats bear that out. And unfortunately, we came out the wrong side of it. But uh, yeah, if, if you go back to your point in the second half, we... Yeah, we, I, I thought we played pretty well and we, we took the game to them. Yeah, we but, did, but um, that's what I'm saying. But when, when Alan Brown came on, but I think it was just before Alan Brown came on, they had the chance that was cleared off the, the line by Shane Duffy, which was unbelievable. Um, great block on the line. It was like Richard Dunn against Russia all those years ago. Yeah. And from then, I just felt so like we, we obviously got the chance through Enda Stevens. He spotted a brilliant ball for Alan Brown. And I felt so maybe he goes across the goal there. It's probably a goal or lower. But like hindsight's a wonderful thing. And it's easy for us to sit here and say that now. And then what I found interesting was people were saying how much Shane Duffy's not comfortable on the ball. I thought he was fine yesterday and or last night, whatever you want to call it. I felt, I felt as though he'd done really well when he was on the ball. He looked solid defensively. Won everything as usual in the air. Uh, Egan beside him as well but uh, he then picks out an unbelievable pass to Didzy who then goes on like a mazy run tries all these little step overs plays in Callum Robinson and you're just thinking hit it he kind of it, it kind of just got a little bit of weight when he goes around the keeper squares it back to Alan Brown he squares it then across the box for Howerhin and he swings his right foot at it and it's cleared off the line then by them and you just wonder if maybe he had been given a shout he could have maybe well, let it roll roll across his body onto his left foot and maybe hit it into the bottom corner. But when you're in the box like that in such an important game, I'm sure all he was thinking was just try get this on target and hopefully he goes hopefully it goes in. Because even if he dummies that and Dizzy goes, Dizzy's ball, he's there and he has the full goal. Well, he has the the, the corner and you'd like to think he would he would have scored. But uh, again, hindsight's a wonderful thing and and that was probably. 
the chance that we needed to win it. And at that point, it kind of felt like you knew it was going to extra time. Then you know, um, and you know, with the with the, with the I felt as though we left players on for too long. I felt Stephen left players on for too long. I felt Didzy magnificent in the second half. Some of his touches, some of his play, absolutely outstanding, and shows why we missed him badly last month for the Nations League games against Bulgaria and Finland. Just bring something different. When we need someone to take the ball in and just hold it up for a couple of seconds and give our defence a break, he's brilliant at it. And um, he's just his quick feet and he just lays it off simple. And there's nothing really, you know, there's no big deal made of it. He just gets gets on about things. He wins fouls. He draws defenders in. And he's just big, strong. No one can get near him. And he's the only striker we have like that. I know Adam Eda is big and strong, but he doesn't, he's not like, he's not built like Didzy just yet. I obviously, I think he will go on to be like that. Uh, maybe not as, as silky skilled on the ball and with his touches and stuff like that. But I do feel as though Eda has the physicality to kind of match that that big man that we need up top. But I thought Dizzy was, was outstanding. I thought Matt Doherty went on a lot of mazy runs and done really well the second half. He then pulled up, like uh, I think it was a hamstring injury, it looked like a strain in the second, in the sorry, in extra time. But there was a point where Harazlin came off the bench for them. And when he came off, he just kind of, you know, nullified Doherty's threat then because Doherty was getting a lot of joy. But I did feel with Doherty, when he was trying to get forward, he'd be playing balls into Robbie Brady or someone like that or Alan Brown. And what they would do instead of running with the ball continuously, they'd turn back and turn back around and Doherty's already made his run. But Doherty makes these strange uh, runs. He runs more into the box rather than around wide like a normal fullback would. I think Jamie Carragher picked up on that. It's like an inverted run he makes. But I felt as though if someone had just played him in, he, was, he would have been in a few times. I'm just people weren't noticing it. I also read online a lot of people saying that our fullbacks weren't good yesterday. I would love to know what game they were watching. Yeah, no. It, it, Matt Dort gets a lot of goals from those runs as well. Uh, more so in, in his Wolves days. It's a bit early in his Tottenham days yet. Yeah, there's, look, there's a lot to cover there. I thought Shane Duffy played very well. John Egan played very well as well beside him. And he got forward and got involved in the attack as well. Uh, I think the big thing for Shane was he's been playing regularly for Celtic and he's just, I mean, for for all the players, they got minutes into their legs in the last month and it makes a difference because the, the, the Finland and Bulgaria games were played in pre-season. So, yeah, the chance, the, the Conor Horahan chance was our best chance. I... Unfortunately, he fell to his right leg instead of his left leg. Um, I think he, he could just put his boot through it and uh, probably could have scored. Um, and, and that was so late in the game. I think there was only about five or six minutes left when when that chance happened. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there would have been any way back. But likewise, had they taken one of their chances, we probably wouldn't have got back either. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, uh, same. We played well. Um, it was two two evenly matched sides, and well, the draw was a, the draw after ninety minutes. Certainly was a, was I thought a fair result. Yeah, um, and and just because we came straight back out from the from the extra time, and it goes straight from they were shown a replay, and the next minute it was did he fires this shot. Uh, right footed at the edge of the box uh, and the keeper tips it over and I was like, me and Jerry were like is that replay because it just came on on the telly it just came straight on to us. I was like I don't remember that chance happening and then they were obviously taking a corner and I was like oh it's obviously back it's obviously back uh, up and running and at that point then you're like okay I still felt as though Shane Long could have been on at that point I felt as though we could have stretched them a lot earlier in the game but Odell came on um, I think he, Odell came off of Robinson and that's right. He, he's, he's got involved. Uh, set up Brown then, who obviously hit the post as well. But I think we were the ones trying to go for it. But we just we just couldn't get the goal throughout, throughout the 120 minutes. We just couldn't get the goal. I just no matter. I think if we were still playing today, we probably wouldn't have scored. Yeah, we. we I think we definitely in the first period of extra time. I think we definitely we kind of went for it. I I think Slovakia were probably. 
I felt an extra time they were probably more settled in and kind of realised or expected penalties more so. Yeah, we went for it. The one Alan Brown hit the post, the butt of the post with. Um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying about Shane Long, but Dizzy was playing so well, it would have been very hard uh, to he take him off. At or, that or point, you put Shane Long on wide, Ian? He looked knackered at that point, I think. Oh, he! Oh, look, he gave absolutely everything. He was definitely, absolutely... Oh, he had nothing left to give when he came off. I, I accept that. And look, as you said, he's just so crucial for us. And uh, he has to be an automatic name on the team sheet. And uh, I suppose it's the balance between had he anything left to give and he was playing so well, do you, do you lose lose something when he comes off the team off the pitch then as well but as you say Shane Long is the ideal type of player for late in the game for extra time he stretches he makes those runs he stretches defenders I was thinking when he came on God it's five years to the day since uh, he scored that goal against Germany and I wonder could history repeat itself but that wasn't to be you know um, but yeah I thought you know, on us. no it, oh look Paul, it's been an awful year in so many ways. And I know it's been an awful year for Slovakia as well, but you kind of felt we're finally due a break, something to give the country a lift. And, uh, oh, I thought it was going to come last night. And in the end, it's just another dampener, another downer. But, yeah, well, we'll just get, but, get into the penalties yeah, last week. Just to time, up with. We, we could have won it, but uh, it, 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 I think it looked... The further we went into extra time, I think penalties looked inevitable. Oh yeah, it did. But I went back to what I said to Jer and the watch lives. We, look, we, we need to get a goal. We need to be probably be pushing up a bit further. But I think Stephen Kenny was probably looking at going, well, there's a chance that we could push up and concede or we can go into extra time and try push on again. I think that's ultimately what his game plan was. We went to penalties and taught me through the penalty shoot it from where you were because I think most people would have seen my reaction watching it live. I was so nervous. I had a horrible feeling in my stomach. And, yeah, I mean, I couldn't sleep last night. I didn't go to sleep till 6 a.m. It's horrible. Yeah, well, I, I, I went live on Instagram with it as well. Um, yeah, so, un unfortunately, they won the toss and went first, which is always, I believe, an advantage in penalty shootouts. And I think they've done stats that, in almost 60% of the cases, the team that goes first in the shootout actually wins. And, well, this was another example to prove that. So, first couple of penalties, uh, the first uh, couple of Slovakian penalties, they, um, they they put them away, no problem. Darren Randolph had had no chance. Um, so we had uh, Ro Robbie Brady and uh, who took the first penalty again? Heron. Oh, Conor Heron. Heron took the first one. Yeah. So our first two penalties good were, were good penalties. Yeah, were, were good pens. Um, so at 2-2, two -two, uh, I think four good pens. Uh, their next pen to go 3-2 up, Darren Randolph, uh, that that wasn't the Penenka. That was the one that he went. He, he almost got a fingertip to it down. He went the right way. It was down in the corner. And uh, I think he was very unlucky not to save it. And uh, then we had Alan Brown up. And uh, I, I thought it wasn't a bad penalty. I, 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 I'm shocked to hear him get him here. He got a lot of abuse on social media. First of all, I thought he had a great game when he came off the bench. He, it was his best game for Ireland. He played really, really well and could have won the game for us. Second of all, right. he actually had the guts. He had the guts to stand up and take the penalty. And I'd never be critical of someone for for missing a penalty in the shootout. And it wasn't it wasn't even that bad a penalty. It was pretty much in the corner. Maybe he could have hit it a bit harder, but the keeper had to get down really well. It was probably a nice height maybe for the keeper, but he did make uh, he had to make a really good save for it. Um so then they were three two up. Next penalty was the that was the Penenka one. Um again Darren Randolph he stood up almost got his hand to it. It was just so frustrating. He seemed so close to it. And he put all his weight in. on one leg, didn't he? And then tried to go back. Yeah, and he didn't have the right balance, and but he still nearly got a hand on it. Um, I don't know. I'd have been well. I, I just said I wouldn't be critical of someone who missed a penalty in a shootout, but I don't know if one of our lads did a penenka in a situation like that. Well, I, I don't think it's the time to do it. 
But anyway, it, it, it worked out, unfortunately, for them. Matt Doherty, well, he took a good penalty, just went too high. I mean, if you're putting it into the, the goal that high, they're pretty much unsavable. And unfortunately, just went too high and, and hit the crossbar. Um, but look, penalty shootouts are a lottery. Uh, Dan Randolph got so close to two of theirs. I know Stephen does so much work and so so much preparation. Uh, I, I heard afterwards they spent uh, they had four years of Rodax uh, penalties that they squatted a couple of iPads out in the pitch to watch the, the stuff. I mean, there was so much preparation goes into it. But I mean, they, I'm sure they had the same for our, our guys as well. Uh, look... A lot of it is actually down to look at this stage. I mean, if you go through 120 minutes, went through the stats already, we were two very evenly matched teams. A draw was probably a fair result. It's just an awful, awful way to lose. And, uh, oh, look, I'm still gutted. I was gutted last night about it. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt next June. When next June comes around and we see Poland and Sweden coming to Dublin, and uh, either Slovakia or Northern Ireland. Now, uh, I know it's going to be it will be awful for some people to be watching uh, Northern Ireland. Well, whatever way it's it's you're watching the Slovakian team that put us out, or we're just looking through the window at the party when our near neighbours and all the Polish people in Ireland they'll and and they're dead right to party. I think we'll they'll have a lot of support from the Irish people as well. The Poles will be here for a party. The Swedes are fantastic fans. They'll be here for a party next June. It's really going to hit home. It's really going to hurt that we're we're not part of it because it would have been amazing. It really would. And uh, it hurts. I'm, I, I was gutted. And I still, 24 hours on, I'm still, I don't know, Paul, I'm still upset over it. I'm still gutted. It's just to come so close and... Uh, and, and I mean, it's not it's not a case of blaming the referee or blaming any of the players or anything like that. I mean, it was a kick of a ball, toss of a coin. It was if we play them again tomorrow, we we could win the penalty. We could win one nil or beat them on penalties, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where, as you mentioned, could have went either way, and unfortunately, it wasn't their day, and. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a kick in the nuts, as you say. But all we can do now is we've got two games. One like when we played Denmark before, we had a huge long wait before we had another game. I think it was till we played Turkey or something. It felt like a lifetime. Um, it was Turkey and France, I think. But now we've got Wales and now we've got Finland. So now is the chance to bounce back. And whether he's going to play, you know, uh, a, a team that he's going to explore or, or, or kind of tamper with, we need to get behind it. And yeah, okay, I, I take what you're saying. It, it, it is sad and it is going to get us down. But at the same time, there's no guarantee fans will be allowed at Euro 2020 with the way things are going as well. It's just such a horrendous time in the world right now. And I'm not wishing that on anyone. I hope everyone could go and watch their team play. And fair play to Slovakia. I think of all else, respectful. Fair play to Slovakia. They're true now. Good luck to them. As I've seen a couple of people commenting on our YouTube comments, you know, laughing at us. But we, I, I don't remember ever saying anything bad about Slovakia, but this is a channel based on Irish football, so we're clearly going to be biased towards Ireland. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an Irish fan channel. So Slovakia, Slovakian people, if you're watching, fair play to you. But as I said, we weren't, uh, we weren't bad about news or anything like that. Now, in fairness, most of the Slovakians were giving it to people in the comments who it's, you know, Got a bit maybe big headed or whatever, but anyway, look, um, it's disappointing, it still hurts, it's gonna hurt for a while. But look, we have to build up for another game now. We've got Wales on Sunday in the Aviva Stadium, I'll be at that. Um, it's still gonna be weird, it's still not good. I still don't like it, it's still crap without fans. Um, uh, fans is what makes it, you know, the buzz going down, the going down the walk. Down to the Aviva from from even just from Balls Bridge down, or even from from the Lewis to Chatterman walking down through Balls Bridge, uh, and all that kind of area. Um, just just the buzz around there, and the buzz of the fans. Everyone goes in, has a point. Everyone's chatting. Everyone's in green. You just miss that on match day. When when it's a match day now, it just feels like 
there's a press conference on or something like that. And then obviously it's different with the players come out, but it feels like an open training session, to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it's not the same. And uh, yeah, well, look, I think everyone is missing fans. And uh, well, I see UEFA are allowing 30% now. I, I saw there were, was it 1,500 fans at Bosnia, Northern Ireland? Uh I think Northern Ireland have 600 fans at their game against Austria on Sunday. They're hoping to have five or 6,000 for their playoff final against Slovakia next month. Um, Finland have fans on uh, Wednesday night. I mean, Irish people can't get into Finland, but uh, if you're living, I know there are some Irish people living in Finland who are who are going to the game, so we will actually have fans at the game. Uh, unfortunately, Irish football fan TV won't be there. Or um, I don't. I don't think anyone that actually will be there uh, from this country. But um, media wise, media wise, or yeah. But it's it's only people who are already based in Finland. Um, but so so. Well, I, I just well, we've said it so many times before. But just hope we find a vaccine or find some way. But find some way of getting some fans back into grounds anyway. Yeah. As I say, it's, a, it's just a depressing time with the uh, with the Karovas, and, me, and maybe this might be actually a good time to let people know who are watching the show or maybe feeling down or whatever. You know, if, if these videos are helping you in any way or, or keeping you going or whatever, we you know we'd be glad to hear. And if you still need anyone to to chat to, you know, drop us a message or whatever if you're feeling low and if we can help out or whatever, yeah, we we'll do what we can. Um, I think we'll we'll leave it at that in terms of the final word, Gary. Uh, huge thanks for joining me and giving your insight and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to give us a follow, check out our social media handles below. If you want to subs- subscribe to the channel, we are very very close now to nine thousand subscribers. So if you're new, you're returning, and you like the videos, head over, subscribe down underneath Gary's uh, name there, or to the just beside it, you click the sub- subscribe button can't even say it subscribe button and uh, don't forget to give the video a like as well and if you if you're listening on podcast as well don't forget to give it a subscribe too thanks for watching and we'll speak to you all soon